In the literary world, the names don't get much edgier than best-selling author Chuck Palahniuk, best known for his graphic and often violent novels like Fight Club and Choke. Palahniuk is known for pushing boundaries, and his latest novel, his 20th, does not disappoint. Not Forever, But For Now is a dark and twisted satire about a family of professional killers. Christina Ruffini got a chance to speak with the author about the book, his career, and his perhaps surprising love of the holiday season. Under the cover of dusk at his property just outside Portland, Chuck Palahniuk gets to work. The author is known for his transgressive and deliberately disturbing fiction. But once a year, he comes out to the woods alone to mercilessly string up. All right, here we go. Christmas lights. Every year there's more of them, but the circuit breakers can only handle so much. Palahniuk loves drama and electricity and chaos both in holiday decorations and his best-selling books. I like to think of them as fairy tales for, for grown-ups. So are your books optimistic? Are they romantic? Are they nihilistic? I would say exhausting. <laughs> Absolutely exhausting. That I just really, really want to exhaust myself and exhaust the reader and then have that moment of happiness at the end and uh, fall asleep. Who did this? I did, actually. Though his characters may cause nightmares. With insomnia, nothing's real. Take the unhappy office worker and human soap-making anarchist from his first and most famous novel, Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. A bromance dipped in battery acid, the controversial book, and its even more controversial film in 1999, starring Ed Norton and a habitually shirtless Brad Pitt, were initially reviled by critics. If this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. But eventually they became pop culture classics, earning Polinick a cult following of his own. It was memorable enough that enough people found it and it, the, the, the culture eventually embraced it. We caught up with Chuck at LA's The Last Bookstore, then headed down the block yeah. to the Los Angeles theater. Have you ever been here before? No, I have not. What a place. This is pretty cool. Where high above the crumbled moldings, this dust-coated projection room still has a sort of shrine to the Fight Club scenes that were shot here. Were you ever a projectionist? Did you ever work? I was. You were? Is that why we wrote this into things? Yes, because uh, I, I still wake up terrified that I have missed a changeover. If you look for it, you can see these little dots come into the upper right-hand corner of the screen. A changeover is the tiny yes. blip. In the industry, we call them cigarette burns that back in the days of film was the cue to switch reels. In the story, it's used as a device to jump between scenes, a trick Polinick is fond of. How do you make it fun? After all these years, how do you keep making it fun? You find a line that you're terrified of crossing and you cross it anyway. Polinick has never been afraid to cross lines or embrace the things other people find icky. Growing up in Washington State, he says it started with a volunteer stint at a local hospital. I'm a 13-year-old orderly. I loved cleaning operating rooms. It sounds very <laughs> All Jeff of your books are suddenly becoming very clear to me. <laughs> it sounds very Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> but I was so fascinated by all of these things. What was, what was fascinating about it? That they were still warm and we were throwing them away. And that so recently that had been a living person and now was being discarded in the trash. Yeah, that's just one place where so many of the stories come from. He studied journalism at the University of Oregon, but wanted to write fiction, although his first short stories got him kicked out of a local writer's group. The leader of workshop said, Chuck, people don't feel safe with you anymore. You've got to find a different workshop. So he wrote a novel about a model who gets her jaw shot off, which was promptly and universally rejected by publishers. I thought, they're just, they're just never going to get me. I'm just going to write a book that I want to write. And they're not going to publish it, but they are also not going to forget it. That literary middle finger was Fight Club, and it kicked off a 30-year writing career with almost two dozen books and counting. He calls his style That's minimalist fiction. Each novel well. starts as scribbles in a notebook, fueled by insomnia and caffeine. When I wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, filled with that fantastic middle-of-the-night anxiety, so I funnel all of that angst into whatever the crisis is for the character. Somebody saves your life, they'll love you forever. 
Whether that character is a con man pretending to choke in fancy restaurants, played in 2008 by Sam Rockwell, or in the case of his new book, Not Forever But For Now, a pair of aristocratic and sociopathic siblings. I had wanted to write what they call an English cozy mystery, and I read a dozen of these, and I hated every single one. What did you hate about them? Uh, I hated the strange disconnect between finding a body torn to pieces in your rose bed and immediately jumping to, oh, the game is afoot. So he wrote his own and hit a secret reveal in the author's note. What is the book really about? The book is about addiction. On tour, Polinick says he's frequently been asked to sign books for family members who've died of an overdose. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking the first time. It's heartbreaking the hundredth time. Were you shocked the first time that someone asked you to do that? I was dumbfounded. I was uh, I breathless. And that's the trouble with troubled characters. In real life, happy endings are harder to write. You met me at a very strange time in my life. But Polinick tries to find the humor in even the darkest circumstances. It's not about being liked, it's about being remembered. Boom, there we are. We Whether go. it's through a roadside conglomeration of Christmas or whatever literary terrors he dreams up next. For CBS Saturday Morning, Christina Ruffini, Los Angeles. Classic Ruffini to end it that way. Yes, of course. <laughs> but I'm also thinking Chuck could write the story about himself. Yes. And that would sort of fit in the entire genre yes, somehow. Yes, it would. Such a testament to doing your own thing, Yeah, right? If he just went with the flow, he probably never would have had a hit book. He does yeah. his own thing, the people yeah. finally catch up Not to him. Not what you like. Trust in your yeah. gut. Yeah.